Hello everybody, this is Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas with another Fishers of Men video broadcast. It's good to be here this afternoon. I didn't have to work. I actually have three weeks worth of vacation. And uh, I thought I might just kind of do my broadcast a little bit earlier today. And uh, like I said, it's good to be here this, this afternoon and it's just good to be just near just having fellowship with brothers and sisters and uh, we're gonna be taking a look today uh, this is this is faith part seven taking a look and the title of the message is Abraham offered Isaac and we're gonna be taking a look at that today we're gonna be taking a look at the standpoint of how Abraham how Abraham uh, how his works actually exemplified his faith. In other words, we're going to be taking a look at how um, a, how you know your actions speak loud of their words and how Abraham's actions had um, he, he did what he did because he had faith in God. Amen. So we're going to be taking a look at that today. And uh, we, I got a lot of scripture to go through today. Uh, please keep me in prayer. Um, and actually, we're gonna be kind of doing, th we're gonna, kinda, we're gonna be kind of doing this broadcast a little bit differently today. This broadcast a little bit differently today, and the reason for it <clears throat> is because I'm going to be, um, hang on a second, I'm gonna be kind of uh, mentioning a couple things before I begin. And just kind of kind of do some prayer requests and stuff like that. So I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently today. Um, it, it will be kind of in the layout of the Pastor Brennan Live broadcast. But it's not a Pastor Brennan Live. It's a Fishers of Men. So, uh, but today I wanted to do things a little bit differently. Because today, um, well anyways, but let me kind of explain. So I want to explain a couple things here. Um... So those of for those of you that are watching, um, if you don't know my testimony and stuff of, of being born again, um, I'll, I'll probably do that in a different video. But in the long and the short of it is, um, it was around this time, uh, eleven years ago, uh, actually, in the city that I live in now, uh, in the state that I live in now, that I had given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I accepted him as my personal Lord and Savior. And it's been uh it's been interesting. I can't I can't say that my walk with the Lord has been has been all rosy and stuff. I've had my moments and um it was around this time, around this month, uh and uh, 11 years ago that I had chose to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I got born again down in Arkansas while visiting my folks down here. And um, I never really thought or imagined, and I never really thought or wrapped my head around the reality of having to move down here and live down here 11 years later. But... Um, you know, God is good, He is always good, and He's been merciful and kind, and um, I've been walking with the Lord for 11 years. I have learned quite a bit, learned a lot. I still have a lot more to learn, but I've, um, I got my, I, I, I was born, I was born again. Um, my spiritual birthday is in the month of December. And um, so that's been quite an honor, but but here's what's even more interesting was <clears throat> one year ago, last year, on the 17th, I got baptized by my pastor, and I got baptized. I joined the church that I'm at now, and. It was also in this month, 10 years, 10 years of having to serve the Lord and walk with the Lord. And it was 10 years after I got born again 
that God had put me at a good Bible preaching church. I mean, I mean, and and I've I've gone through some good Bible preaching churches, but what I want to say is that it was ten years after after getting born again, I got baptized by immersion. Uh, by my pastor, and that was actually, that probably would have been uh, a year ago from yesterday, because actually a year ago, was it was on a Sunday, so, but today's Monday, so it was a year ago that I got baptized, and it was 11 years ago that I got born again, and so it, um, if you ever want to check out my testimony of actually being baptized, I do have that on Sermon Audio. I also do have that on YouTube, and you are more than welcome to watch that and stuff like that. I think it's important. Um, I, you know, it's it's baptism is very important. Uh, a believer's baptism is really important <clears throat> because it is a public profession. Uh, it is a public profession to all those around you that you have indeed you have indeed been born again. And that you have made the choice to, 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 to be crucified with Christ and then eventually resurrected into new life. And so baptism is, a very, is very important. <clears throat> and if people who haven't been baptized that are born again, uh, maybe that's something that you might want to research and, and find out what baptism means. And, and and be able to make that decision to, to be baptized. It's it's important to be baptized into a good Bible preaching church. And it's not I'm not saying that uh, you should, you know, I'm not saying that as per, you know, you know, uh, as a works thing to where you have to be baptized to join a church. No. I did because, you know, I was baptized actually I was actually infant baptized, which is not scriptural. I grew up as a Lutheran and was and it was infant baptized, but then I was baptized by a heretic. And my pastor had wanted me to baptized, wanted me to be baptized to join the church, just purely out of the fact to be baptized in a body of believers, not a body of unbelievers. So that's where we're at. So. <clears throat> I just wanted to mention that. I, I, I just thank God for these years that I've walked with Him so far. I know that the good Lord has still has plans for my life. And that God has uh, a lot of good things in store. It, I'm going to tell you something though. As per one who has walked with the Lord for 11 years. Um, that road is not easy. <clears throat> the road's not easy. And it's very... It can be very challenging, very, very, it's very challenging because the moment you become born again is when the devil will really get at you. And because when you're born again um, and signed and sealed by the Holy Ghost, um, you, or just sealed, but you know, but, <clears throat> but once you become born again, the devil really gets at you because you pose a threat to the devil. So... I'm going to tell you that the life of being born again is not an easy one. It's a it's a challenging one. But take heart that the Lord is always with you. And for the fact that the, the Lord has been so gracious to me all these years, all the years that I've walked with Him, these past 11 years, um... The fact that he's been so gracious enough to put up with my with my nonsense and to <clears throat> bring me through trials of in life um it's because of those trials that have made me into the man that I am today and it's the trials that I've gone through that have matured had actually matured me than when I first started, you know, and so uh, there's actually a verse I want to share with you in those lines. Um, let's see here. It it's it's what Paul says here, and I'm gonna find it. Let's see if I can find it here. 
Um, okay, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And something I've noticed in my life is that there are things that, you know, I got, I got, I had my fear of chastening and I still do. <clears throat> and I have, I've, I, and I still, I still fall short. And, um, but the thing is, of all the things I've been through in my life and of all the things that, you know, of all the things that, um, I've went through and gone through and stuff like that and all my chastening and correcting, it helped, it has, um, definitely, um, you know, I see a little bit of a difference in me as to when I first began. I have a little wisdom, not a lot, but I do have a little. And by putting, but the thing is, is that, um, you know, as what Paul said, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I become, when I became a man, I put away childish things. And that's what spiritual maturity will do to you. Spiritual maturity will will actually have you put away childish things and you start to be mature in the faith. You start to gain wisdom and experience through all the things that you've been through. And so anyways, I, I don't know why I said that. Um, I just, maybe if there's some, maybe there's someone watching that, uh, maybe there's someone watching that might, might take encouragement of that, for that. Amen. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that because I think that it's, that's just really been a blessing to, this has been a blessing and it's amazing what God has done in my life. And I know that God's not done with me yet. That he intends for me to you he intends for me to you uh, for me to be a witness not uh, not just to my family but to preach the gospel and to preach it as it is and I am not ashamed I am not ashamed of the cross of Christ the cross of Christ. Jesus Christ died on that cross on that tree and he rose again on the third day. And there is power to that. There is power on a salvation for all those who would come and, be and believe on Him and what what He did for you at the cross. Amen. Um, now, I, with that said, I, I do want to kind of get into some prayer requests here uh, really quickly. Um I'm going to try to not go too long because I don't have much battery power on my iPad. But uh, really quickly, let's get into some prayer requests. Uh, we got a sister. Pray for her, for strength for her and her mother. Um, we have a fellow sister right now that's being spiritually attacked. We, we need to keep her in prayer. Uh, she's not feeling very well, but please pray for her and her and her and and for her father for salvation. Um, please pray for our fellow sister, uh, is actually in the U, she lives in the UK, I think, uh, Great Britain, but pray for salvation for her family, and, um, uh, pray for me and my family, pray for the ministry, pray for these videos, pray that God will take these videos and use them for his kingdom, for his glory, for his honor, amen. And, um, <clears throat> so with that said, um, I don't want to go too long, but I do want to get into today's message. I got a lot of scripture and I got a lot of things to say, and I'm just going to just go word for word in my notes. I sort of designed my notes in such a way that it would be things that I would, you know, but if the Lord decides to put some, if the Lord decides to put something you know, I'm just going to mind the Holy Ghost and let Him take over. Amen. Let's just, um, I want to mind the Holy Ghost. I want Him to take these videos and do with them as He pleases, not as I will. Amen. So, <clears throat> right now, let's, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to start in verse 1. Uh, we're going to start in verse 1. 
And we're going to actually read all the way through verse 19. So we're going to read through almost half the chapter. Uh, but I think as long as, as, as we continue on, I'm just going to read bits and parts of the the uh, verses that we're going to be I'm going to be preaching out of. And again, um, today I'm going to be talking about Abraham and his faith and how he was obedient to offer his son up. And so we're going to be talking about that today. I'm going to be getting into the number 22 today and how that correlates to what has happened and like what what Abraham did, okay? So let's begin. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to uh, Hebrews 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel, uh, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe he, that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved, with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and yet and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned, he sojourned in the land of promise, and as, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but have, having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed them, confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a, con uh, a country. And truly, if they had been minded, mindful of that, of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to re to have returned, but now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed. Where where God, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He hath pre prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise, promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall I, shall I see be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also received in him a figure. Okay, so we're going to be talking about that section of Hebrews. Okay, and so we're going to what we're going to so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about Abraham's Abraham's faith, Amen. So with that said, let's go ahead and if you have your Bibles, turn with me to James. Uh, turn to James chapter two, verses twenty one through twenty three. James two twenty one through twenty three. It says, "Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar?" Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was, was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. When Abraham offered up Isaac, this was a work, but his work demonstrated his faith. 
Uh, oh, here we go. I forgot to put a space there. Okay, so when Abraham offered Isaac, this was a work, but this work demonstrated his faith in God. In other words, he had faith in God because of his... Uh, in other words, uh, hang on a second. Um, he had faith in God, but and because of his faith, his works showed that he had faith in God. Okay, so his works demonstrated. Okay, that kind of seemed a little confusing, so let me try to simplify this as best as possible. Okay, Abraham did works, and his works were all done by faith. And his works exemplified his faith in God. Okay, so let me, let me ask you all a question. When you say that you have faith in God, does your works demonstrate your faith? Does your does your does the works that you do for others demonstrate your faith in God? Okay? Remember, your actions speak louder than words. For a born-again believer, just to have faith and no works. Remember, faith without works is dead. Okay? This is why, as believers, we need to be careful at what we say, but more importantly, what we do. Our works and what we do need to reflect our faith. If they are not, we need to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith. That's what Paul said. Okay? So the question I have for you is, does your works reflect your faith? If not, that's something that you have to that's something you might want to get settled. That that's something you want to get settled as soon as possible. Okay? And when I say that, meaning if your if your works do not reflect, then there's something wrong. Then there's probably something wrong that you might need to fix in your life. Because what we do needs to reflect our faith. Because if it doesn't, then we will be seen as hypocrites. We would be all talk and no action. Amen? So remember that. In uh, James chapter 2, verses 14 through 20, it says, What doth, what doth it pro profit, my brethren, though a man say he had faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man say, may say, thou hast, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and, and tremble, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. So we see that James is saying that without faith without works is dead. Just and I'm gonna tell you something: the soul without the body, the body's dead. Okay, so the same thing. Okay, so faith without works is dead. So, do does, does your works exemplify your faith? Because let me tell you something: this is what Abraham did. And Jesus said that if you were the children of Abraham, you would have done the works of Abraham. You know, one of the things I believe is that the works of Abraham could be faith. Because Abraham had faith. And because he had faith, his, re his works reflected on that faith. Rahab, she lied. She outright deliberately lied. But she she lied because she 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 was trying to protect the two spies that Joshua sent. Okay? 
And we actually covered that in the first video. So if you... Uh, I want to encourage you to go back and watch the and watch that video. I can't remember what it was called, but it's the it's the very first part of the series. So, um, you know, go. I want to encourage you to go back and rewatch some of the videos that I've done on faith. <clears throat> Amen. So, but faith without works is dead. Okay. Now, we're going to examine and take a look at how how by faith. Abraham offered his his only son, okay. And uh, we're going to take a look at the prophetic picture that God is showing us as pertaining Jesus Christ on the cross, okay. Now, when we take a look at this, okay, you find that account and you find that account in Genesis chapter twenty-two, okay. Um, that's going to be our reading. That's going to be our reading for today. But here's the thing, okay? The number 22 is the number for light, but is also, you know, or um, is is also a number for revelation. Okay, and why do I say that? Because in the book of Revelation there is 22 chapters. Okay, and in the book of Revelation you notice that God is revealing to us what has, is, and will happen. Even in our future. Okay. So revelation is really a revealing. Okay. It's really revealing. So God is reveal. So in, in Genesis 22. God is revealing to us. His plan of salvation. And is a type or picture. Of what Jesus Christ was going to do on the cross. Okay. Now. Let's go to let's go to Genesis chapter two. Uh, let's, let's go to Genesis chapter twenty-two, verse one. Genesis chapter twenty-two, verse one. Okay. Now, when we go through this, I want you to keep the number twenty-two in mind. Twenty-two being the number for revelation. Okay. Revealing. Think of revealing. Okay. Now, in Genesis twenty-two, verse one. It says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Now, we, now I want to stop for, right there for a second. We have to understand that when God says he tempted Abraham, the word tempted means that he was, that he is going to be tried. In other words, God is testing his faith. And when we look up in Hebrews, you know, God shows us that Abraham was tried. Okay, let's let's, let's go back to that verse. Um, in verse 17, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried. Okay, when he was tried. Abraham was tried. Okay, God was trying him and testing his faith. Okay, and we, we're going to see in the next verse here that Abraham, we're going to see what Abraham's test was. Now, I want, now, like I said, I want you to keep twenty-two, the number twenty-two in mind, being revelation, because God's going to reveal something to us. Excuse me, God's going to reveal something to us, okay? And God will always reveal things. Um, God always reveals things through His scriptures. He will not do anything that's contrary to His word, okay? And in Genesis chapter twenty-two, verse two, okay. This is this is the test. Okay? This was this was what God had told Abraham to do. Okay? In verse 2 it says, "And he said, Take now thy own, thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there a for a burnt offering upon the mountains which I will tell thee of." So we see here that God wants Abraham to offer his son up as a burnt offering upon a mountain that God would show him. Okay, now why is this prophetic? Why is this? Uh, why? How? How does this? What is God revealing here? Okay, why is this prophetic? Well, God is revealing His plan of salvation. God told Abraham to offer up his only son as a burnt offering. You want to know something? God, what did God do? God gave his only begotten son to die on a cross 
that we might be saved. Here, Abraham is a picture, a type or a picture of God the Father. Isaac is a type and picture of Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, John chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. We all know we should. this is the most famous verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In 1 John 4, 9, it says, And this was manifested of love, manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Romans 5, 8, But God commandeth his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So as we see that Abraham is a type and picture of God the Father, okay, giving his only son to die on the cross for our sins. And the good news is that Jesus Christ is not dead, but he is alive forevermore. And I'm going to tell you something. Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. He's coming back for his bride. Soon he is. He's coming soon. And it's going to be sooner than, than we think. Okay. Genesis chapter 22 verses 3 through 5. Going back to Genesis now. It says, And Abraham rose up in the morning and settled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come to you again. Okay. Now as we continue to read, it's very interesting that Abraham says that we're going to go. You stay here with the donkey and we're going to go up and we're going to worship. Okay. Now when you think of worshiping, I think we kind of think that it's singing but worshiping is more than just singing. It's being obedient to what God has told you. Okay? In Matthew 15, 9. Okay? But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the, the commandments of men. Again, we see that again in Mark 7, 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? And Colossians 2.23, which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Okay, so as we see that people do worship vain. Okay, the people, when Je the people that Jesus were talking to were worshiping in vain because they were teaching the doctrines and commandments of men. Okay, but let me ask you a question. How much more can we worship God by being obedient, by teaching the doctrines and commandments of the Lord? If we teach the doctrines and commandments of the Lord, isn't that not obedience? So, so and, 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 and worship, and by then we are worshiping God. So, so can worship be a lot more than singing praises to God? Yes, it is also obedience. Amen. Now, if I talk really fast, so I apologize. I got a lot of stuff to go into, and I don't. My battery power is about to, it's, it's about ten percent. So I'm going to kind of talk really fast here. Um, <clears throat> Genesis twenty-two six through eight. Um, it says, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it. Upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, saying, Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Okay? So as we continue to read in verses 6 through 8, here's another nugget, okay? 
that God is revealing to us as per his plan of salvation. When Abraham and Isaac go up, he asks his father where the lamb for the burnt offering is. And it's interesting because God calls Abraham a prophet and God is right in what he said. Okay, this is why. Because by faith and by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Abraham prophesizes to his son that God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. The lamb, that lamb that God will provide is his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In John 1 29, it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 1 36, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. Acts 8 32, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so he op so opened he not his mouth. What is that talking about? That's talking about Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was on trial, he didn't say a word. He kept quiet. Amen? Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. Amen? God provided himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Amen? Isn't that... That, that should get us excited. I, that gets me excited. And uh, 1 Peter 1, 19-21, But with the precious blood of Christ, as, a, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was, was foreordained be the, before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who by him do, do believe in God and raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. In Revelation 5, 6, it says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of a throne, and the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Amen. That, was, that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the lamb. Amen. And... Um, now we're going to head back to Genesis 22 now. Genesis 22, 9 through 13. And there came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called on him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I for now I know that thou fearest God, saying, Thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and looked behind him, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Now there is a lot we can see here in verses nine through thirteen, okay? When Abraham was going to slay his son, the Lord called on him to tell him not to lay a hand on the lad. We also see that through the works that Abraham displayed, he had faith in God. Remember, faith without works is dead. And Abraham was an excellent example. Okay? Abraham was an excellent example. Um, and God and, and what God was going to do and what God was good and what God was gonna to do to Isaac was the only okay, so hang on a second, let's see here. And uh what God was going to do because Isaac was the only son of Abraham, and God told him that Isaac was going to be the promised son. Okay, the promise was gonna come through Isaac. Okay, therefore Abraham's had such faith that he must have believed that God was he was going he he believed that God will raise him up again. And guess what? God did that for Jesus Christ. Amen. And Hebrews 11:17 through 19. By faith when a when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And that when he received the, received the promises of offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. According 
accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence he received him in a figure. Okay? So we also see that God provided... So, okay. So we see that Abraham considered that God would have raised him up. Okay? But we also see that God had provided a ram to offer up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Now remember... When Abraham did this, this was long before the law was ever given. And, and so everything that Abraham did was of faith. And we also see that this ram is another type or picture of Jesus Christ. Why? Um, why is this? Because, why is this? It's be, this is because the ram was a pure ram without spot. And Jesus Christ was pure and knew no sin. Okay? And Exodus 29, 16 through 18. And thou shalt slay the ram, and thou shalt take his blood and sprinkle it around about the altar. And thou shalt cut the ram in pieces and wash the inwards of him and his legs and put them into pieces and unto his head. And thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Leviticus 5, 18. And he shall bring a ram without blemish out of the flock. What thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his ignorance wherein he erred, and wist it not, and it shall be forgiven him. Isaiah 53, 5, But he was ruined for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Now, let's go. So we see that that ram is a type or picture of Jesus Christ. All the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament point to Christ. For atonement of sin, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. There has to be a shedding of blood. And by the way, Jesus Christ shed his blood once and for all. That whole payment has been paid in full. Amen. Now, Genesis twenty-two fourteen through 18. Okay. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it said, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Remember, the Bible says all nations. It doesn't just say the nation of Israel. It doesn't just say a nation. It says all nations shall be blessed. Amen? That, and, and we see that Abraham's seed is both Jew or Gentile, anybody who believes on Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus Christ today, you are a child of Abraham. Amen. So, uh, as so as we have seen, Abra so as we have seen Abraham in the works, in the works that he did, exemplified the faith that he had in God. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up now. Okay, my question is: Are you saved? I want to encourage you that if you truly, if you're truly saved and born again and spirit filled and God fearing. You are a child of Abraham, and the promises of, of, of Abraham apply to you through Jesus Christ. Why is this? Because Jesus Christ is the only one that's perfect. He was the, only, he was the one that had the perfect works, and if he dwells within you, God does not take a look at you, but he takes a look at his, he takes a look at his son that he so loves. And by the way, if you're born again, you have been given the power to become sons of God. Amen? And so it is because of Jesus Christ and what he did for you at the cross that you inherit those promises of Abraham. Amen? It's only by through, it's only through Jesus Christ that, that you can get those promises. 
of Abraham. Amen. So Jesus Christ is the only one that's perfect, and he has he has per he has been. I mean, he is perfect. He's pure, and and he has pure righteousness. Okay, his righteousness is pure. Our righteousness without Christ is just filthy rags. Even with, you know, here's the thing. We don't do good. We can't do good because our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. If there's any good that you do, it is because of Jesus Christ. It's what he did, not what you did. Amen? So it is only through Jesus Christ that you can get the blessings of Abraham because it is Jesus Christ that saves. Amen? Um, now, listen, okay? For those of you that are watching this that may not be saved, the good news is that you can know for sure that heaven will be your home when you die. Please do not wait to accept the Lord because... Please do not wait to accept the Lord into your life because if you do wait, tomorrow might be too late. Okay? And 2 Corinthians 6, 2... Really quickly, and we'll be done. For he saith, I have heard thee, and a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the time. Ex Behold, now is the accept, the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Okay, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Romans thirteen eleven, and that knowing that the time, and that knowing that the, that the time. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Okay? Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to wake up out of sleep. Okay? It's time to, to, this, today is the day for salvation. Like I said, tomorrow might be too late. Romans 10.10 10. Um, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess confession is made unto salvation. John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And finally, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Amen. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to come before Him and sincerely confess your sin. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to cleanse you and to wash you, to fill you with His Spirit, to put your faith and trust in Him and what He did for you at the cross. Ask Him to fill you with His Spirit, to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you and wash you. Whosoever shall confess with their mouth and believe in their heart shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your heart and believe in your heart, you'll be saved. Amen. So, listen. Really quickly, and then we'll be done. Okay? I love you guys. And because I love you, I, I, I tell you the truth. But here's the thing. I don't want you taking my word for things. Amen. I want you to take with what I say and match it with the with this Bible. If what I say doesn't match, then let God be true and every man a liar. And if I'm wrong, then let God chase and incorrect and rebuke me. And I will also have to give an account for it when I go home. But if I am right, then I pray and ask that he will show you what I'm talking to you about. Amen. Listen, I know that was a lot of stuff to get by. I wanted to be sure to get this whole video put in because uh, my battery was getting low and, and I got to I gotta do a better job next time making sure that this thing is more charged up than not charged. So uh, please forgive me if I did speak really, really fast. Uh, but I really hope that this video was a blessing to you and I hope that you got something out of it. Amen. Uh, but listen... Um, keep, please keep praying for me. Keep praying for this ministry, the video, my family. Um, you know, pray that God will take these videos and have his way and will with these videos. But I pray, but please pray for our sermon audio ministry and pray that get this, these videos will reach out 
to those that need to hear it. Amen. Listen, this is Pastor Brandon. I'm signing off for the evening. God bless you. I love you. Um, tomorrow, stay tuned for for uh, Pastor Brandon Live. Don't know what I'm going to preach yet, but I'll you know pray pray for me on that. And uh, if the good Lord willing, we'll uh, we'll be here tomorrow live. Um, I love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you guys. Love you. See you. Bye.